and it's just like boom. Do you go to bed eating popcorn and fall asleep like I do? And that's one of the best gadgets you've done in a long time. Hello everybody, it's Barry here. Hope you are well. Welcome to our kitchen wherever you are in the world. You might live near me, you might live the other side of the world, you might be on a bus, a plane, a train, you could be walking a pug down a road whilst carrying a unicorn. Today we're doing a kitchen gadget test, part of an epic playlist. So at the end of this video, if you've missed any others, there is a huge playlist. Put on your sweatband, grab the popcorn, because it goes on for blooming hours. Also, before commenting down below, please consider that some of these gadgets, some are novelty, but some can help people with certain disadvantages in the kitchen and help them with certain tasks, which is amazing and sometimes life-changing. Awesome. Let's open something. Imagine the scene, you're sat around a business table with all your colleagues and they're thinking, mm, what can we call our business, right? Uh, we like hoovers and vacuuming and we love wine. That's where the vacuum comes in. One of the first gadgets I ever did was a pineapple cora. Uh, it looks similar to this, but they have actually gone and evolved quite a bit uh, in the time since that video, and that was literally just a cora. Now this is actually a slicer and wedger at the same time too, which segments it. Remember I've got that apple gadget? This thing, okay? So it was basically the same principle of this apple cora thing when you like, core and at the same time but it does it with a pineapple thing too i'm going to give this a wash and then we'll give it a blooming good go you've got that round sort of nasty stump thing in the middle like the spine <laughs> the spine of pineapple right so that's where at the moment this doesn't do anything we don't need that it's all about this and that feels quite cheap and flimsy compared to the one i did originally but it's serrated so it pierces in and with those serrations if we turn it like a normal screw to the right oh yeah so now, we lift this up. <clears throat> oh, <clears throat> look at that. <gasps> That's amazing. And there's your pineapple spine, which you could pop out like that. <laughs> Got this thing that obviously stayed up, so hopefully. <clears throat> oh dear. Well, dogs can eat pineapple. Apparently it's very good for you. There's even sizes, that is amazing. So you don't have to eat it straight away. You could put it into a bowl, wrap it in cling film, and have it for another day. That is genius. Thanks. Let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go, there we go, look. What, the whole thing? Oh, oh, okay. And then you just go like that? Yeah. Oh my gosh. Is that amazing? An amazing gadget. That's so good. Oh my gosh, this has changed my life. <laughs> I yeah. hate cutting up pineapple. You're not giving this away on a giveaway. <laughs> this is mine. I'll buy another one, it's fine. No, it's mine. And that's one of the best gadgets you've done in a long time. There's juice in the bottom. You are literally living your best life. Mm. Is that good? Mm. Awesome. What an amazing, what a stonker. We got this by, I think it's Jui. We've had a few of their gadgets. They're, like, they're generally quite useful. Uh, it's a soda fresh. Boison gazeuse petillante. Um, Keep the fizz in your pop. So basically, it's designed to prolong the freshness or the carbonation of a fizzy drink with a few easy pumps. It's kind of like, I guess, a soda stream with one hand. Twist onto any bottle opening, and you pump it until it's firm and resistance is felt. So that must mean that it's all like, yeah, I'm carbonated. But this is what it is. Why is there that there? Why, what do we need that for? Oh, please. What is that? Is that a plug stop thing? Does that need to be in there? Oh no, oh no. I mean, it fell out, surely it's not needed. That's just like a plug. When you pop the top of a bottle or a can, the pressure inside decreases, which causes the CO2 to convert to gas and escape in bubbles. So I guess this, as we twist it on, gives it, I mean, that's covering it way better than this is. And then we push down. Oh, why, why can't I push you down? What's going on? Why, why can't I push you down? What's going on? Is it this? Oh my gosh! Pump until firm resistance is felt. Well, that's gonna take quite a while. This, nothing's happening here. It's not getting any tighter, I wonder. So let's try it with that plugged in there. So that little white plastic thing is on there. Oh. Oh, that's getting firmer. Pump until firm resistance is felt. That's getting, oh. I'm so glad I didn't throw that plan. I thought it was packaging and the instructions don't even say anything about it. Right, that is rock solid, as is this one actually. Wow, that feels even firmer. 
and we have opened it. Okay, so we're gonna leave these till the end of the video and see if that is just as carbonated as this. I've got no crazy gadget to test that. Just my taste buds. The other day I was at my older sister's house and she very kindly offered me a bacon sandwich. I was then mortified that she chucked the bacon in a microwave for two minutes and it ended up being some floppy bacon that resembled more like a latex floor. It wasn't crispy at all. I like my bacon crispy. Don't get me wrong, I know you can microwave bacon, it gets you out of jail. And my sister said, well, the builders haven't complained. And then I looked at one of the walls, and I'm like, mm. <laughs> that's what they think of your bacon. But seriously, I know you can do that. But my point is, I like my bacon just a little bit crispy, you know, that nice sort of contrast. Mrs. B, as you know, likes it more like crispy, like proper American style, snappy in your mouth stuff, just that balance. But is there a gadget that can cook bacon crispy in the microwave? Well, there is, because you can kind of do it on a plate anyway, but this is by Good to Heat Plus, or is it Good Heat 2 Plus? Premium microwave cookware, microwave bacon cooker, chewy or crispy bacon in minutes. Doesn't come with the bread. But it's got this rack here, so it actually you can cook the bacon, it will sit on there, and the fat will drain off. And one thing when you're cooking something fatty uh, in the microwave is this, like I say, it's vented, and then it's gonna become like a splatter shield, so loads of bacon should come off. At first, you'll get that Barry's Sister Chewy style bacon, but apparently, if you want that nice crispy bacon, 30 second increments, keep it going, that classic microwave step. I always say it myself. Hmm, how long in the microwave? 30 second increments, cheers. It's just like the get out of jail for microwave, isn't it? Unless it's chocolate, do 10 seconds, all right? Uh, so let's give it a wash and give it a try. Oh, is that gonna spin around? Oh, just about, okay, cool. We'll try two minutes first. It's bubbling away like crazy already. It's only been like 10 seconds. I've got pineapple slices, I've got bacon, smoked bacon. All I want to do is wrap the bacon around a pineapple, a little cocktail skewer. I've got enough bacon so we'll trust it for two minutes and not look at it. Oh wow! Oh, look at all the moisture on the top. <gasps> so I'm going to lift it this way so it kind of drains and falls. Ah! I knew that would happen. So the fat is dripping down there. Okay. So that was bang on two minutes, and that is chewy bacon. That's cooked through my sister style. I don't know if it's because it's still warm. Look, if I just tip it like that, do you see? You see the fat? Look, it's like a water slide. Look at that. So let's get some more in there and push it. Let's try and get you crispy. So we will try that 30 second increment and see what that does. Whilst that cooks on the subject of builders, uh, my dream job would be a roofer where I don't get paid, where someone goes, okay, yeah, I'm interested in you working for me, but what's the price? And I'll be like, it's on the house. Nearly, oh my gosh, nearly there. And that extra 30 seconds has really made some fireworks start going on there. It is booming. Ooh, All right, we need a bit longer. This will be three minutes. Oh my gosh. Is it me or is that bacon just getting smaller and smaller? <laughs> but still a little soft in the middle. I reckon one more 30 second blast. I love it if I open the door and it's like all disappeared. It's just completely disintegrated. What the? Ah, I'm just kidding. Look, here we go. Let's get this off. Uh, <laughs> it's like tiny. I mean, it's, it's crispy. It's really actually quite hot still. There's still a little patch in the middle. I don't know if I'm gonna get it. If I do, it's gonna, oh, should I do 30 seconds more? Oh, go on then, go on. Oh my gosh, I think that's burnt to a crisp. Right. Hello. Give me bacon. We've got chewy bacon. No. We've got incinerated bacon. And I think I'm gonna go a halfway point between the two I just did then, about two minutes and a bit. Okay. To get you a like, slightly crispy bacon, you can pick which one you like the best. Okay, so I can eat all the bacon. Yeah. So we've got the soft chewy bacon first on the left. Can I try that? Mm, do I have to? It's fine. And it tastes quite nice. So this bit was done a little bit longer. Okay. So it should have some crispiness and some chewiness. You can oh. see the colour on there. It's a sound mm. all chewy. <laughs> it's sound all crispy. Mm. Oh no, you got a bit chewy. Mmm. 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 Mm. You prefer that? Mm. I haven't tried the crispiness one though. Well, yeah. Oh gosh, watch your teeth. It tastes like crackling. That was really salty. It was, but isn't that how that, when you have your bacon crispy? I normally like it crispy, but I actually prefer this one. Because it enhanced the saltiness on the, yeah. the longer it was in there. Maybe. I wonder if it drew out so much moisture, the microwave, that it just made, it left it really salty. It's almost mm. like this, it looks a bit 
raw, but it's not raw. No. No. It's <laughs> the sign of all chefs. As this well, is, is how it? you're meant it's to cook bacon clay, not it's... like how mummy cooks it. <laughs> I think my favourite bacon was the chewy one. Yeah, mine too. Apologies to my sister. How about you? I like the chewy one and I like all of them. <laughs> <laughs> I like all of them. I'm not picky, I just like bacon. I like them all. Yeah. But I think when you cook it in a pan, you've got a little bit more control so you can get that crispness. Whereas in the microwave, it's just like, boom. Apparently, you can also reheat pizza in that thing. So we've got some uh, pizza that was <laughs> in the fridge, wrapped in foil, nice and cold. 30 second blast. I think the microwave is gonna smell a mix between bacon and pizza. That is not a bad, is that a bad thing? Well, for a vegetarian like Phoebe, <laughs> yeah, but. <laughs> yeah, sorry. Has that been two minutes? Uh, I think so, and oh, I think that's all right now. So what are we looking for then, Chloe? Gooey cheese. Gooey oh. cheese, oh Ooh. my gosh. <laughs> oh. It looks like the pepperoni's been scorched, doesn't it? The crust isn't damp because of the rack on it. When you reheat things, sometimes mm. in the microwave, it can get really soggy. Is it good? Mmm. That's worked an absolute charm. This next gadget by Chefen is the Innuendo Field Zip Strip. Uh, it's a herb stripper. Yeah. So you insert the stem of a herb, so it's got to be a woody herb, into the hole with the root first, pull it through, and the bowl will collect the herbs. Now the Zip Strip doesn't just have any old bowl on there, oh no. This has got measurements on it, so when you want like teaspoon of herbs, something like that, you can actually do it and measure it in there. And it's quite restricted because it's woody herbs. It was £8.50. Wow. Okay. Look, there are the four holes. So I've got a few different herbs in. I thought I'd start with the one that I'm more concerned about, if that makes sense. First up is sage, quite a furry herb. I love the smell of it, but it is woody and stalky. So what we're gonna do, I, this actually looks a bit too big for it. Oh, will it go through? It is, here we go. Oh. No. <laughs> Oh no. Maybe if I take it a thinner piece. Here we go, let's pull that through. And it didn't even land in my bucket, but we got it off there. And we have got a sage leaf in there. Now, this is the thing I don't like the idea about it. Not only is it green on green, so you might not be able to see that too well. But at what point do we know that this is like a teaspoon? I mean, it's got the measurement on the side, one teaspoon, two teaspoons, it's got mills as well, it's got cups, it's got everything, it's brilliant. But like, if we're going for volume, like you've then got to take that out chop it up and then put it in there and realize that you need a lot more leaves, which I've never really known. You know when you do some cooking like that with herbs, it's like, yeah, just need a, two teaspoons. You just chuck it in, don't you? Like, yeah, I like that. I'll just chuck 10 times more in. It's fine. What measurement's that? You got to take it out, chop it up and shove it back in. Is that useful? Uh, next up, mint. Oh yes, we got it through. Okay, will this work? Don't, yes, it did. Yeah, if you don't mind pressing it down a little bit, and I suppose you could do that with the sage as well, and you can't be bothered to chop it up. Yeah. Okay, this is rosemary. And this is what is actually littered, littered, nice, uh, on the packaging. But every time we're having to use the widest hole. Ugh. Right. But what I like about this on the rosemary is that it's much more fine so like, you don't want that stalk in there, which is gone. Because it's so much smaller, the volume is more sort of compressed together. And again, so if you squish it down, you can kind of get a rough idea for it. I, I, I like that because it fills the gaps more, which brings me on to the last herb, which I think should work a charm. So this is thyme and it's the main stalk that I don't like. The rest of it, I feel like kind of like wilts away when you're doing like roast potatoes and stuff. If you've never done it with that. Mwah. Look, that's actually get. this is the smaller stalk. It's getting that off as well. Oh, this is actually quite cool. It's getting all of those little thyme leaves off. I normally like the chef and stuff, but this one's probably not one of my favorites recently. Next one. This next gadget seems a bit unnecessary, but I bought it for falafels. Uh, it's a scoop that shapes them into the disc shaped patty. This is by somebody called Prue, uh, who's actually now a host on the uh, Great British Bake Off here in the UK. I met her once and she was lovely. And apparently if you want, you can uh, use this thing uh, to shape meatballs as well. The really random thing, whenever I bake a cake here on the channel, it could be the worst cake ever, like the ketchup and mustard cake. People are like, Barry, you should go on the Bake Off. Actually, Linton, who helps with the editing on the videos here, he actually edits a lot of the Bake Off and probably sees quite a lot of interesting things. We're gonna make uh, the, the, the falafel mix. 
because it's not a batter, is it? It's not a dough. Stamp it, and then you're going to get it into the stereotypical cylindrical disc things, which this is basically what it does. Let's make some. Just pushing in some frozen onion and garlic, straight from the freezer, already chopped. Super lazy, but amazing. Cumin, coriander, handful of parsley, chickpeas, just about fits in there. And now that there's space, add in an egg to help it spin and bond it together. Add in a teeny bit of flour just to help it stamp a little bit. Start to warm a pan back up. So I've got it here, flattened out. Push this in. Oh! Ah! That was scarily fun. Oh my gosh, that's amazing. I'm sure it exists, but someone needs to do a bigger version of this for burger patties. If you've got your own like stall selling these, this would be genius. Um, but I think you could always just get <laughs> like a cookie cutter or something. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Some of you guys send me these random care packages. I have this uh, water burger spicy ketchup in one of them. Loving it. Mm. Tastes really good, nice and fresh. We sometimes make them for Phoebe like that, but I didn't think we would ever need a falafel scoop in our lives. I can't deny though, that worked an absolute charm. For the shape and authenticity, or if you make them often, I actually think this is pretty darn good. Nice one. So before our last gadget, if you're not subscribed to the channel, please consider doing so. And if you are, make sure your notifications are turned on about all new uploads. And of course, check out the playlist and any cool gadgets you've seen. Do keep them coming on social media. I've still got about a hundred to get through that just keeps getting topped up. Last one. This is an electronic popcorn maker. There are so many different varieties of popcorn maker. They're quite healthy too. A lot of them use like no oil or hardly any at all. And of course you can season it and it's so much cheaper than getting popcorn from a cinema. Makes delicious homemade popcorn without any mess. It's got this huge bowl thing, which hopefully it just falls. It looks like it just falls down. I don't know how this one works. Transparent lid and bowl so you can check on progress. Hi progress. And that's about it. But meanwhile, here's a teaser. This is my foot, that's what I'm gonna show you, my first kitchen gadget invention. I've done about three months worth of prototypes. I'm happy with this one at the moment and it will evolve. So I'm launching a crowdfund imminently. As I speak right now, it's not live, but if it is soon, I will put the description in the video. It's gonna be a real simple crowdfund like the veggie prep kit one. If you want one, just basically back it and I can send it to you wherever you are in the world. That system works so well and I'll probably do some other perks like sign ones, things like that, but I'm not gonna show any more. I've got like 10 different ideas for kitchen gadgets and this is my first one nice and easy as I say fits in the drawer and I can't wait to show you it stay tuned I was just thinking like I've got all these ideas for it and like obviously COVID has postponed the pizzeria one for the time being but it's like well why don't I just do something where I can just send it to you wherever you are in the world so much easier with these ideas I've got and I genuinely think you're gonna love it so we fill this up and we pour it in here this is amazing, it's another oil-free popcorn maker, which I love. Press that button. Apparently, we can check the progress through the lid, but that is really hot. It is very loud. Apparently, in under three minutes, we will get popcorn coming out of there. Did you see how there was like one final kernel left in there and it just flew out of here like a post box? It's gone everywhere in there. Not like massively. This will be given away to the latest Patreon, by the way. Um, I do not need as many popcorn makers in my life as I do. It's worked, it's warm, it was loud. But this is what you can do. You can literally take this over to your sofa, your bed. Do you go to bed eating popcorn and fall asleep like I do? That was fun. It was just a little loud. And I've just scratched around in the bowl a little bit and the only thing I will say is there were some unpopped kernels and they can really, they can rip your teeth out. True story. But I'm actually really impressed with that. Shake that up with some seasoning in there. That's the only thing you're kind of restricted. You could put some paprika in there. Oh, and no oil too. It's just grip to it. 
Amazing. All right, so we've got that one signed. Good luck on Patreon, whoever gets that one. Back to the lemonade. So apparently if you leave lemonade that you've opened, um, it is fairly tight out on the side. It can stay carbonated for up to two days. And if you put it in the fridge, it prolongs it. But let's just test it anyway. So we pump this up. It's still really firm to be fair. If I, um, let's just do this. Gee, yep, that's still good. That's still good. Hi. And this one. Oh gosh, yep, yeah, that has still got that in there. Right, so I'm gonna leave that for 48 hours. I'm not gonna pump it anymore out on the side with this one and uh, yeah, see you in two days. Before we do jump to 48 hours time and hopefully non-flat lemonade, I haven't told you what my favorite one was today and the flaffle one was surprisingly good. Uh, I actually like this the best. Proper stonker, so simple. And sometimes they're the best ones, but I do have the perfect recipient for the bacon cooker. That's your gift. What is it? That is a microwave bacon cooker. Oh, now I know why. It drains the fat. Ah! Chewy, chewy bacon in two minutes. You said that bacon in the microwave <laughs> is bad. I'm a changed man. Uh, see, I told you. L O V E is how you spell food. Gonna make some truffles to get you in the mood. To me, your support is smooth as silk. When I have my cereal, I pour on milk. If you got a food mixer, give it a whirl. I gotta let you know I'm still cooking in love with you, girl. Hello everybody, it is over 48 hours. In fact, it's probably nearly 58 hours uh, that I have left these on the side. I don't know, they, they both look really, really flat. So it's eight o'clock at night, sorry about the lighting in here. It's one of the reasons why I'm building the garden kitchen so that I can have some amazing light and uh, it will look cool any time of day. So let's try the standard bottle. In fact, I'm gonna shake it up a little bit. Oh no, oh, there's no fizz at all in that. Oh, it smells like lemonade though. Just tastes like a lemony syrup. <laughs> that is so flat, oh my gosh. Okay, so let me just shake it up a little bit. Oh my gosh, I felt the bottle go really, f oh, Ooh. wow. Oh my gosh. It's kind of like, I feel like it's probably got like another day in it. It's fizzy just about. It has certainly prolonged it. Ooh, that worked. I had really low hopes for that. It's not perfectly fizzy, but it's definitely acceptable and passable. So not a bad gadget. Cheers folks. That is if you could pretty much, it is very dark in here, I'm sorry, but uh, look, it was worth waiting over 50 hours for some lemonade, right? Right?